So we actually discussed in the last section um, what happens when you have an inscribed angle. And so in the last section, we saw that an inscribed angle is exactly half of the arc that it cuts. So if I have this angle here that's 25 degrees, then the arc that's created by that angle is going to be 50. And you can see it doesn't really matter how big the angle is. Uh, it still works out that way. And so all of a sudden, we no longer have an inscribed angle. So here we have an inscribed angle, just barely. And here we don't, because now all of a sudden, this other ray that makes up the angle is on the outside. But what you find is even when that happens, you have half of the angle measure that creates it. And so the very first thing on your handout is... The measure of an angle formed by a tangent and a secant. This is your tangent line. It touches the circle once. A secant. A secant cuts through the circle. But the measure of an angle formed by a tangent, tangent and a secant that intersect at the point of tangency that's your next fill in there, point of tangency. That means on the circle, they intersect on the circle, is one half the measure of the intercepted arc. <clears throat> one half the measure of the intercepted arc. <clears throat> so a secant and a tangent that intersect on the circle will have the same exact rule as an inscribed angle. The angle that is created by the secant and the tangent is exactly half of the arc. All right, so on your handout, you see it written that way. One half of the arc equals the angle. One half of the arc equals the angle. So let's look at number one together. Number one, we have this angle right here. This is what they want. So always make sure that you understand what they want. They want this angle measure. In order to find that angle measure, uh, we know it's going to be, the angle is going to be one half of the arc, but it's the arc that that angle creates. And the arc that that angle creates is this right here. They did not give it to it, but we can find it. How do we find that arc measure? Right, 360 minus 206, right? Because they gave us the other piece of the circle. They gave us this. We know an entire circle is 360. To find the angle they're asking for, we really need this piece of the circle. So to find that piece of the circle, we subtract the 206. What do we get when we do that? 360 minus 206 gives us what? 154. That is the arc measure. We are still not done. They are asking for what? The angle, which is half of the arc. So what do we need to do to that? Divide it in two. All right, divide it in two. So what they're looking for is 77 degrees. That is what they are looking for. Go ahead and try number three on that same page. Number three on the same page. The next scenario is that you have two secant lines that intersect. You'll notice when you have two secant lines that intersect on the inside of the circle that you have two angles and you have two arcs that are cut by those angles. Now, what you do have is vertical angles. So that means that this angle measure one is congruent over here to that one. And this means that this angle is congruent to that angle. 
So you do have some congruent angles, but it's finding those angles so that's important. And so this is the next definition or theorem rather on your handout. The measure of an angle formed by two secants, two secants that intersect in the interior of the circle is one half the sum of the measures of the intercepted arcs. One half the sum of the measure of the intercepted arcs, all right? And I've written the formula to look like this. The angle measure is going to be one half the two arcs added together. So what does that look like in an actual problem? What are they looking for here? They're looking for this angle measure right here. So then I have to say, okay, that angle is formed by these two secant lines right there. Which means in order to find that angle measure, I need the two arcs that are inter intercepted with that angle. So the arcs that I'm going to have to look at would be this one and this one. So to find the angle, I'm going to say one half the measure of the first arc added to the second arc. So when I do that, I get, what, 234? I need to multiply that by 1 half or divide by 2. So my angle measure that I'm looking for is 117. Now that actually gives me this angle measure and this angle measure because they are congruent. They are congruent. Okay? So go ahead and try... Number six on that same page. Number six on that same page. This is the next theorem that you have on your handout. The measure of an angle. <clears throat> Formed by two secants, once again, formed by two secants that intersect in the exterior of the circle is one half the difference of the measures of the intercepted arcs, okay? The difference of the measures of the intercepted arcs. Now, I've written it like this. The angle is one half arc one minus arc two, okay? So let's look at what this looks like on an actual problem. They are asking us for this angle measure right here. Because this secant, these secants intercept outside of the circle down here, I'm going to subtract those. So it's the same concept, but you're subtracting. So to find this particular one, I'm going to say the angle is going to be 1 half, 125, minus 59. So 1 half 66, which is going to give me 33 degrees. So when they intersect on the outside of the circle, two secants that intersect on the outside of the circle, I'm going to take half of the arc measures subtracted. Go ahead and try this one. It's a little bit different. They have given you the angle. They want you to find the second arc. So they've given you the angle, they want you to find the second arc. Go ahead and try this one.
So now you have a couple more scenarios here. The measure of an angle, this is formed by a secant and a tangent, which we had at the beginning of the section, a secant and a tangent. But remember, at the beginning of the second the section, the secant and the tangent actually crossed on the circle. They intersected on the circle. Here, the secant, which is this one right here, the line GA, and the tangent, which is the line BF, they are intersecting out, outside. You will notice it is the same formula as the two secants that intersected outside. So if I were gonna do this one, I would actually do it just like the one y'all did. The angle is equal to one half the measure of the difference of the angles. So you're going to subtract here as well. <clears throat> So here it's going to equal 80 degrees. So a secant and a tangent that intersect on the outside, also one half. So go ahead and do 12. The measure of an angle formed by the intersection of two tangents. So now we have two tangents is the same formula. Intersecting on the outside here, you're going to get the same formula as subtract. <clears throat> One half the difference in the measure of the arcs. One half the difference in the measure of the arcs. All right. I did want to do this example because this is a little bit different. When you have two tangents that actually um, intersect on the outside of the circle, um, you actually have the entire circle. And so for something like this, I would actually assign this to be a variable. So this is going to be x. That's what we are looking for. So always put what you're looking for as your variable. All right? If that piece of the circle is x, what is the other piece? How would I find the other piece if that piece is x? The other piece is the rest of the circle, right? So what is an entire circle? <clears throat> 360. So that means this arc down here is going to be 360 minus x, right? If what I'm looking for is x, <clears throat> the other piece of it's going to be 360 minus x because the tangent makes the entire circle when it's two, two tangents, all right? My rule is that I am trying to find that to find the angle, I take half of those subtracted, okay? And so that's what I'm going to do. The angle, they gave it to me, that is 68, that is going to equal one half the two things subtracted. Well, this is x. This is 360 minus x. All right. You do need to distribute here that negative. So I have 68 equals one half x minus 360 plus x. You're really just solving. You can multiply both sides by 2 here. So 68 <clears throat> times 2 is going to give you 136. Over here, you can combine these x's, right? So I have an x and an x. So that is 2 x's minus 360. I'm going to add 360 to both sides. So I get 496 equals 2x. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 2. 
So my X, or what I'm looking for, this angle, or this arc measure here, is gonna equal 248 degrees. 248 degrees. So when you have two tangents that intersect on the outside, it actually takes the entire circle. So go ahead and try one of those. They are a little more difficult. For this one, you want your X to be down here. Remember, what you're looking for is always your variable. So you're going to do that with your X down there. on the circle. When it's on the circle, you only have to have worry about one arc and angle, okay? <clears throat> the angle is just one half the arc length when they intersect on the circle. When they intersect inside the circle, you are gonna do half of them added together, the two arcs added together. But anytime it is outside the circle, you are going to do one half the difference. So you're going to subtract one half the difference, okay? So the first thing I want to, to just um, recall to your memory is the Pythagorean theorem. So they've drawn this circle on the coordinate plane. So we're somewhere on the coordinate plane. Uh, they have given us this x, y value, h, k. So h is x, k is y. Um, and then they've given us some point on the circle right here. Some point on the circle. So if I wanted to try to figure out uh, what this looked like, how would I draw this circle? So if you remember way back when we did something that looks like this and this created a line. So now we're going to try to figure out what the formula would be to create a circle. All right, and it's based on the Pythagorean theorem. If you take the first X, which would be here, and draw it out to where this line ends, you see that I created this right triangle. All right, I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger if it will let me. All right, I created this right triangle. And so in the right triangle, remember I have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Well, my a squared is what happens from here to here. So if I were to subtract my two x's, that would give me one of my bases. And if I were to subtract my y's to get the distance there, that would be my other base, right? a squared plus b squared. And if I take the square root, I am gonna get this side here. Well, if I'm talking about the circle, that hypotenuse is actually my radius, right? And so, if I were to say, well, my x value, that's the x value here, and that's the x value here. So subtracting my x's gives me the x minus the h. Subtracting my y's, there's a y, this is a y, that's y minus k. So I can just put those variables there. If I wanna get rid of my square root, I just square both sides. So I end up with r squared over here, and I got rid of my root over there. And that actually gives me the formula for my circle. What it tells me is a couple things. It tells me my radius of my circle, so how big my circle is. And these two right here give me my center. So HK actually gives me the center of the circle. This tells me where the circle starts. This tells me how big the circle is from where it starts. And that's actually where we get the formula for the standard equation of a circle, which is on your sheet here at the bottom of page three on your sheet. The standard equation of a circle is x minus h squared plus 
y minus k squared equals r squared. All right? The center is hk, and the radius is r. So in your handout, you should have the standard equation of a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. The center is hk. The radius is r. So let's look at example one in your books. This is on page 387. Write the equation for the circle, and they've given us two different scenarios. The first scenario, they actually gave me the center, and they gave me the radius. So this is pretty straightforward. If I know that the standard equation looks like this, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, they have given me my center, which is h, k, and they've given me r. This is like y equals mx plus b. When I said here is the slope, here is the y-intercept, just give me the equation in y equals mx plus b. You remember that? And so all you had to do was plug it in. And so that's all we have to do here. We just plug it in. We say x minus my h, which is 0, plus y minus my k, which is 4, equals my radius squared. Now you want to simplify this as much as possible. You do not want to foil, all right? So I'm not going to foil anything. I'm not going to actually do it out. But if it's x minus zero, I will write that as just x squared. I will leave it if it's a group. <clears throat> so y minus four, I'm actually going to leave as a group. And then I do want to actually square that guy. Three squared, I'm going to write nine, all right? And so that would be the answer to that question. What is the formula for the circle, the standard equation of that circle? It's x squared plus y minus 4 quantity squared equals 9. All right? Easy enough. They could also give me a graph. All right? They could give me a graph. For a graph, I'm just going to find it. All right? So my h and k, well, that's point there. What is this point right here? Negative 2, positive 1, right? So that's negative 2, positive 1. What I don't have is my radius, right? I don't have my radius. Um, I can find my radius <clears throat> by looking at how far away I am on a perpendicular. By that I mean you may not be able to tell your radius here, but you can tell your radius here, can't you? Right? You can go from point to point. So how? what is my radius? It's 2. So they gave me my radius 2 from the picture. And then I'm going to do exactly what I did up here on A. I would say x minus my h squared plus y minus my k squared equals my radius squared. Once again, I want to simplify if I can. What do you think I want to do here? Instead of x minus negative 2, what do you think I want to write that as? Plus 2, right? So I'm going to say x plus 2 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals what? 4. That would be the formula there. So let's look on your handout. There's several types of problems. The first set of problems on your handout wants you to identify the radius and the center. So let's look at those. Look at numbers 16 through 18. All right. Look at number 16. It wants me to give the center. All right. Give the center of the circle. That should always be a point. It's going to be x minus. What am I subtracting here? Well, I'm subtracting 3. y minus. I'm subtracting 14. My center here is 3, 14. Then they want me to give the radius. Remember, this is the radius squared. So what is my radius then? If 16 is my radius squared, what is my radius? It's just 4. So my radius here is 4. All right? 
They could give me the center and the radius just like they did here, 19 through 21. They want me to write the formula, write the formula. So I would say x minus 16 squared plus y. Am I gonna have minus seven or plus seven here? Minus a negative, what am I gonna do? And then one squared is just one. I wanna point out here that when it was positive, it stayed subtraction. When it was negative, it went to a plus because you're subtracting a negative, all right? Or they could do like we just did in that example and they could give you a circle. So go ahead and do 18, 21, and 25. For 18, give the center and the radius. For 21, write the equation. For 25, write the equation. A negative 9 and a negative 14. The reason I have a negative there is because it ended up being plus and your formula is minus. So the only way to get x plus 9, you had to have had x minus a negative 9. You had to have y minus a negative 14. So keep in mind they're going to switch signs because your formula was already subtraction. All right, so you should have got negative 9, negative 14 as your center. Your radius, just leave a square root of 11 if it doesn't have a perfect root. For 21, your center was negative 6, positive 8. So you would have had x minus a negative 6, which would have been plus 6 here, squared. y minus 8 squared. And then 6 squared is 36. And then here, your circle center was at negative 2, positive 3. So x minus a negative 2, that was plus, y minus 3. And then your radius was 2, so you squared it to get a 4. Any questions on those? Here they have given you the center. So they have given you h and k. They have given you an x and a y. But what they have not given you is your r. All right. So we're just gonna set this up the way it is. We know that x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So we are gonna back into our r using what they gave us. All right, so we're gonna use this x and y just to solve for r. So my x is three, my h is negative two. So three minus a negative two squared plus my y here is negative four, minus k, which is nine squared, and that should equal r squared. And then just do order of operations. Three minus a negative two is five. Five squared gives me 25. Negative four minus nine, that is negative 13. When I square it, I get 169, all right? When I add those, I get 194, that equals r squared. But I'm looking for my formula. Remember, my formula looks like this. So all I really need is r squared. If I were solving for r, I would go ahead and take the square root, but my formula actually calls for r squared. Does that, does that make sense? So once I've solved for r squared in this one, if I'm just getting the formula, I can leave it. So if they want the formula for the equation, I'm gonna go back and plug in my h, my k, and my r to this. So my formula is x minus h minus a negative two, so plus two, plus y minus k equals r squared. And so you can use a point on the circle as well. On your handout, 22 through 24, that same thing. They give my center and a point on the circle, a point on the circle. So if my center is H and K, they've given me an X and a Y, I'm gonna just fill it in. I'm gonna say 16 minus my H plus nine minus my K equals my R squared. This gives me four, four squared is 16. This gives me one. 
1 squared is 1, so 17 equals r squared. So now I have my h, my k, and my r squared to be able to write my formula. So I'm going to say x minus my h squared plus y minus my k squared equals my r squared. So go ahead and do number 24. They've given you a center and a point on a circle, and they want the equation for the circle itself. <laughs> 